Hey guys, welcome back to Delving Into the Cold. This is D. Um, gonna go ahead and warn you this case is gonna be a little graphic, so listener discretion is advised. Um, we're gonna be discussing the Black Dahlia today. Now, the Black Dahlia refers to um, a woman by the name of Elizabeth Short whose body was found on Norton Avenue in Los Angeles, California on January the 15th, 1947. Um, she was 22 years old when she was found. And, you know, she was, she came to Hollywood for a bright future. She wanted to be an actress. She wanted to, you know, be with the in crowd. And, unfortunately, her dreams were cut short in January of that year. Um, so we're going to talk about the discovery, the evidence, um, and the suspects. And, um, as far as evidence, there's not a lot, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, so like I said, on the morning of January the 15th, 1947, her body was found. Um, and it was found by a mother who was walking with her child on Norton Avenue. And when she approached the corner of 39th and Coliseum, um, she saw what she thought was a, um, mannequin sprawled out in a, uh, empty lot there. And as she got closer, she realized that it wasn't a mannequin, that it was indeed a, um, female corpse. So she called the police, and they came, and they investigated. And unfortunately, it's a case that in the 70 years since it occurred, it's not been solved. Um, now, Elizabeth's body was in a terrible state when it was found. Um, her body had been severed in half and drained of all, her, of all the blood. But now, the worst part, even worse than being severed in half, which is pretty bad, but even worse than that was the killer had cut gashes into her mouth, um, or I'm sorry, into each side of her mouth all the way back to her ears, um, giving her this kind of perpetual smile, if you will. And, it, you know, it's reported that even the detectives that were at the scene were shocked by the state that the body was in. Um, and I'm not going to put pictures of her corpse on the video for um, this podcast. I, I don't think that she would want to be remembered like that. So I'm definitely not going to do that. But you can Google it and it's pretty gruesome. Um, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, she did come to L.A. to be, you know, famous and be remembered, and this is not what she had in mind. Um, so, there was a, um, there was a huge media blow-up about this for probably about two months following the murder. She was front-page news. Um, and, you know, the LAPD investigated, and they did a thorough investigation. Um, but unfortunately, while they were investigating, there were, you know, a multitude of false confessions, and there was only ever one witness found. And that witness, the only information that they had was that they had seen a, um, black sedan parked in the area early the morning, um, that Dahlia was found. Um, and eventually the lack of witnesses and physical evidence took a toll on the case and it went cold. And just to clear something up about Elizabeth, um, I've heard a lot of people say that she was a prostitute or she was an escort or whatever. And there's absolutely no evidence to support that. Um, she hung around the people that she hung around with in the hopes of, 
making a name for herself in Hollywood. And I don't believe that there was anything untoward happening. And even if there was, there was no reason for her to be murdered, especially in the way that she was. Uh, sorry, that was just a little segue. It just bothers me when people say that because by all accounts, she was just, she was someone that was trying to make a name for herself. All right, so let's get down to uh, suspects. Um, by the end of 1948, the suspect list had grown to 192 names. So the LA District Attorney compiled a list of 22 people that he considered to be viable suspects. Now of that 22, a handful remain suspects today. Um, Currently, there's a list of 11 people that compose that. I'm sorry, that comprise the quote-unquote most likely suspect list. I'm only going to get into two suspects today because I feel like the two that I'm going to get into, to me, seem the most likely. Um, like I said, there have been numerous false confessions. There have been conspiracy theories. But to me, these two suspects that I've outlined, um, well, you'll see why. You'll see why I think that they're strong suspects. The first one is Mark Hansen. Now, the reason that he's a suspect is he was one of the last people to speak to Elizabeth before her disappearance, which, by the way, was about a week before her body was found. Um, and... It's been reported that Hansen also allowed Elizabeth to live in his house on and off for about six months. Now, the Los Angeles District Attorney has files that indicate that Elizabeth had rejected Hansen's sexual advances. And, um, so that's always motive. Anytime we hear that, that... <clears throat> sorry, that pings on the radar as motive. But, another thing that makes him a strong suspect to me is items belonging to him were discovered with Elizabeth's items that were later mailed to um, authorities. And he just gave inconsistent statements. You know, he was consistent in being inconsistent, basically. And, um, so yeah. So that's Mark Hansen. Now, the next suspect I'm sure you've heard of. He is a very popular suspect, especially in conspiracy theorist circles. And that's George Hodel. Now, he first came into suspicion, um after um, being accused of molesting his teenage daughter, Tamar. And this led LAPD to plant microphones in his home for about six weeks in 1950. Now, during this period, the detectives reported that they captured Hodel stating, and I quote, supposing I did kill the Black Dahlia, they couldn't prove it now. They can't talk to my secretary anymore because she's dead. End quote. Now, that's suspicious, obviously. But also, I think that statement also serves to show just how cold this guy is. He doesn't care about anyone but himself. He's callous, he's cocky, and he thinks he has connections. So... Um, it's believed that the secretary that he was, uh, referring to was going to expose his illegal medical practices. And, you know, she was quote-unquote gotten rid of. Um, other witnesses actually place Hodel as having known Elizabeth and maybe having a sexual relationship with her. Um, and later on there were nude pictures of a woman found and a lot of people believed that there were pictures of Elizabeth. That's never been conclusively confirmed, but it's a possibility. But now what's strange is that his own son, Steve, 
believes that his father killed Elizabeth, as well as other women in L.A. And Steve has gone as gone as far as to have cadaver dog search the property that his father once once owned. Now, Steve is a former detective, and he believes from a evidentiary standpoint that there is definitely strong evidence to name his father father sorry father as a killer. But now, there's never been any forensic testing done as far as I know on George Hodel's former home because a new owner is currently residing there and they haven't allowed it to happen. Um, But I do agree with Steve that his father is a worthy suspect. Um, He certainly had the medical training and um, you know the the precision I'm sorry, I can't talk today. The precision skills to do what was done to Elizabeth. And he's a sketchy guy. I mean, if you look any more into George Hodel, even outside of the Black Dahlia case, he's sketchy. He's just, he's a weird guy. And there's nothing wrong with being weird as long as it doesn't hurt anyone, but I have a feeling this guy has. Uh, so, honestly, he's my suspect. He's the guy that I think did it. Um, and I hope that one day, you know, we can prove who did it and we can find out what happened. And I think that Elizabeth deserves those answers. Um, but no matter who committed the crime, it was heinous and an innocent woman lost her life. And I can only hope that one day the murderer is identified. Uh, that's all I've got, guys. Um... Again, I am on uh, iTunes now, so you can give that a listen. I'm also back on Podbean. um, And there's always the website for the podcast. So, uh, yeah, and also there may be a little bit of lag between episodes. Um, I'm taking on more hours at work currently, um, and I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to post as consistently until about June, but I'm going to try my best. Alright guys, uh, that's all I've got for you today. Stay safe, stay curious, and I'll see you next time.